load that critter up here load 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 there we go it even knows where I've been how awesome is that I want this one I don't know if I get that for free all the time or not I think I do because I deleted everything that was cool anyhow here is a worksheet that I've already built now if I were to try and just go run these functions they would fail but I should be able to rerun them from the top, so I'm going to hit shift enter at the top. I believe there is a key command. Okay, this is taking a while for reasons. Um, there's a key command to rerun everything, which is cool, and I, I've seen a few people do this. That scares me to death. I want the first thing to, to work. The reason that took a while is, if you remember back in Emacs, that load population took a little while for that to run because it's taking the population in the United States for 15 years for every county and loading it into memory. Well, I just did that with this one line right here by including that database. And because Gorilla Rebel didn't dump all that stuff out to the console, it's a lot faster. So I now have in memory, right now, the entire population in the United States for 15 years for every county. Kill. Now I just need to have access to that. Now, let me explain this next function. This is called demunge. Um, for reasons I'm not going to go into right now, I had to load the database with the IDs of the counties with the letter C in front of it. The letter C was not significant. It could have been Z or Q, but I picked C for county because I'm that original. And I had to do it for reasons that frankly, I don't remember. So what this function does is it strips that off. It doesn't actually do it here. I just wrote the function and I actually have a unit test for it, right? So or I could have a unit test. So I could run dmunge ID and give it C1, whatever. And let's try and, oh, demunge. What did I say? Gmunge. Demunge. Well, I wasn't even close. It's demunge GOID. Okay, so there you can see I passed in C5022 and I got the one without the C. So, yay, it works. Woohoo. Now, um, I have a few other functions that I have pre built. Um, Data script is a data datum based database. Um, it is an in memory uh, free database um, that works very similar to another database called Datomic. I also have done this with Datomic. Um, Datomic is not a is not free software though you can use it for free for non commercial uses. Um, but I use DataScript because it's easier to set up, right? I mean, you literally just run the thing. But the query language, like I said earlier, is just a big set of joins. So this is the actual query right here. So I'm running D slash Q, D is my DataScript database. That's actually defined up here, where DataScript core as D. It's closure, they like single letters, so I'm in win in Rome. So we're gonna run Q for query as opposed to, you know, Queen or Quiznos or whatever. All right, we're gonna run a find where we are going to return these variables. I named them, so that means they have to be someplace else, in dollar sign. Dollar sign is shorthand for the database, which is actually down here. And it's also going to take, so this is saying I'm gonna take in a database and I'm gonna take in a year. I got really hung about this dollar sign thing when I first got started and I learned you put the dollar sign in and you shut up and you move on. So I'm going to shut up and move on. Where, and this is the where clause, and now this is where I'm going to refer you to the plethora of data log tutorials, of which I may end up going to do one at some point if I feel I'm an expert enough. But what this is doing is it's binding together all the data that I put together about the counties, the population. Um, down here, I'm doing it by state. Up here, it's everything. And so you can see I've got some uh, references into state. And the idea here is that you want to try and reduce your data by your most um, restrictive component first, and then continue to 
to filter down to the pieces of information that you really want. And so in this first one, not real restrictive, I want everything based on a year. So I give you a year, give me all the counties and their population. Here, I give you a, a year and a state, same thing, give me the counties. Um, here, I will give you a specific state, county, and it's a county, I, uh, what is it, county name. It's like McLean County or Collin County or um, Orleans, what do they call them in Louisiana? Um, parish all right i give you this information and give me the population of that particular county and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just shift into these guys and i've loaded the, the the functions into memory now here i have my unit test so here i can actually test these things out so here i'm going to retrieve the population of illinois in 2011 zoink there it is this yeah it's a little rough to read that so what i'm going to do I'm going to leave this function. I'm going to hit control GB, I believe it is. Yes, I'm remembering these things. It's awesome. And I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in a table here. Oh, oh, but I got to do a thing. What is it I got to do? I got to do gorilla table. I believe it's gorilla table as table. Totally not it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is don't don't look look away for a minute you're not looking right don't don't look crap what is it ah report gorilla ripple that table gorilla ripple that table okay you can look now okay all right cool so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to do table. I'm not going to pretend like this is easy. It's not easy. Table view. But it's still really powerful. All right, and we're going to feed it. Is it as easy as just feeding it the same data? We shall see. I may have to do a map. Not too shabby. There are probably better ways to do this. But still, I have it in a nice table view here. Um, yeah, it would be nice to take the, the keys and stick them at the top. And if I ran this through like a gajillion more functions, I could do that. Um, but I want to get to the heart of this, which is let's take this and let's start graphing stuff. So I could take this and I could actually run it uh, multiple times. So let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and open GO. I'm apparently hitting the wrong thing. Control GL. Let's load this other worksheet I have. Now, since I've loaded this worksheet, I can reference that namespace from other worksheets. So in Gorilla, in the population graph here, you can see I have a reference to uh, Gorilla demo population. Okay. Now, if I were to start here and start executing these functions, they would fail because I gotta go load that other worksheet first. I could have put these all into one worksheet, but then that would have been one big confusing worksheet. So I put, I broke it into multiples. Behind the scenes, there are different workspace, different namespaces. I guess I could have put them in the same namespace. I, I don't know. There are people that know this stuff better than me. I just make this stuff work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. Now I'm going to build up a few other functions here, like this one here, reduce population. Um, I actually don't have the population of any one particular state in the database. No, what I've got is I've got the population of all the counties of a particular state. So when I do a query for a state, I don't get its population, I get the population of, of its county. So this is a reduce function. It's private, that's why I got the little minus sign in here. And what this does is, given a fistful of populations, which I'm going to assume are counties, just add them up. That's all it's going to do. So what this is doing is, is this is doing a reduce using the function add given. And what I do is the, the data that comes out, you know, what? if I were smart, I would have kept that other guy open. So let me go reopen population here. Yeah, it's all in the command URL doohickey thing. So you can just pull it up. Anyhow, if I rerun this, you can see the result, which I got to rerun all this stuff. Okay, the, the data comes back as ID, and that's the ID of the county, and then the value is the population. Now, the reason I didn't say 
county is this and population is that, my choropleth, where this is going to eventually feed, automatically looks for the ID of whatever you're showing on the screen will be in the ID, and the, the thing that controls the color will be value. And I can make this whatever I want, and I can tell the chloroplast to look for whatever I want, but I decided to go ahead and default to ID and value because today it's population, tomorrow it's the delta percentage, maybe later it's percentage of left-handed people with blonde hair, whatever, you know, whatever I want to change the data to be. But I'll just go ahead and keep putting it into value, keep it simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out value, and of course, as I read this, I can already tell you there's a short way to do this that I learned like two days ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it, go ahead and pull out the value for every item in population, which is passed in. So, boom, we got that function. Now, I should have a unit test for this, if I were smart. Well, I was smart at one point and then I became stupid because I, I got rid of it. So if I create, recreate this data set or something like it, let's just take like, let's just take two of these and we'll just copy this out. This is a vector of maps or a set of maps. I always forget what the parentheses is. Okay, so there's the thing. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it through, um, what did I call it? You remember the commands, I can't remember the functions. All right, so I'm gonna run that through reduce population. And behold, it totally didn't work. Um, hmm. Do you want to be a vector? Why don't you be a vector? Ha, ah, wants to be a vector. Uh, so at any rate, it worked. What I did here is I've got two maps here. So here's you know this value here and this value here. And if I do the math, see seven plus three is 10, one plus one is two, plus one is three, plus two is two, yeah, close enough, the math checks out. So yeah, it's adding it. I should say that sometime. All right, the next thing is to build the population by state. So given a state, build a graph or build a chart. I have to be careful because now we have these graph databases and I think these things are graphs are really charts. Anyhow, um, now having read Gorilla Demo source code, he did some really cool things in there with um, default values, which I really liked. So um, I followed the pattern. So um, I'm passing in what's called a divisor. And the idea here is when I'm showing, say, the population of California, there's millions of people in there, and so I had my, my charts were coming out with two big values on the right. So I pass in a divisor, which defaults to one, but I can change it so that I can divide everything coming out of the database by this number and make my number smaller, and then I'll change the title to say, hey, this is millions or thousands or billions or whatever. It depends on what I'm showing. Um, and I do that by invoking the go get me the population over in the database and then for each item in that I'm going to reduce the population for that state yay because this is a build population by state and um, and then I divide it by the divisor now this particular thing is hard-coded to do it over the range of 2000 to 2015 yes that says 2016 um, that's the way range works. It works up to one less than the second value for reasons. I didn't write closure, I don't know. It, I was off by one, I increased it. Anyhow, um, so I've got that by county, and I've got that by state, not necessarily in that order. So here's where the money, this is the money right here. I can go through and I can start to graph this. Now imagine you're doing this in something like Excel. Yeah, you can do that. But here you're not doing it in Excel, you're doing it against um, a backend data system. Right now I'm pulling that, that data from an in-memory database. But I've also had it pulling from Datomic, which is a not in-memory database, it's sitting on disk. In fact, I had um, Datomic pulling from DynamoDB on Amazon Web Services. And um, that's a remote database. In fact, it's a cloud-based database. That thing could grow as big as I want it to grow. And I'm not having to worry about sharding and clustering and all that stuff. It's a, it's a way of thinking about data that, that it really excites me because you don't have to be a database expert. I don't want to be an expert in databases. I want to do cool stuff like this, which shows that Illinois sucks and we're losing people because we can't balance budget. Um, 
over time. Now here I set the divisor to millions because apparently they have millions thanks to Chicago. Um, let's look at another state. Let's look at uh, Colorado. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Colorado's growing. Go Colorado. You're awesome. Um, trying to think of a state that sucks in a losing population sort of way. You know what? Wyoming's awesome. Doesn't suck. I'm guessing the population didn't grow. Yeah, they grew. Now you can see here the population in the millions. You know, okay, let's take that down to the thousands. Give me one, two, three. Yeah, okay. And uh, let's be smart. Thousands. Now this is just text, just whatever. And this is all built into Gorilla Plot or Gorilla Gorilla Ruffle. Um, run that. There we go. Population in the thousands. Five hundred ninety-nine thousand. Okay, cool. Um, gosh, is there a state that's been losing people? I honestly don't know. That's probably something I could find out sometime by, you know, studying the data I've got here. Eh, okay. Let's look at specific counties. Let's go back to Illinois. Which, consequently, is losing people. I guess that's... There you go. There's a state that's losing people. Yeah. Let's go on down here. Let's look at... Oh, I already have Cook County. So this is Cook County. So this is Chicago. Otherwise known as not the rest of Illinois. And uh, yeah, you can see here, um, they, they lost quite a bit of people here. Probably, I think, believe this was called the housing bubble, maybe? I don't know. Um, let's look at some other county. McLean, this is where I was from. Well, not originally from, but um, yeah, you can see where you know, certain large employers started to uh, expand outside of Illinois. Um, let's see here. Um, Look at Peoria, but you can see how easy it is because I've composed these functions up and I've abstracted out the the queries and some of these things, which I've done all of this right here in Gorilla Rebel, right? All of the the abstraction and com, uh, composition, everything, all right here. Um, and I can take this and I can I can graph it any number of different ways, and these are all different functions I've run to try and just kind of fiddle with things and and learn about how the ins and outs of closure works as well as Gorilla Rubble. And then I wanted to take this to the next level. Choropleth. The first thing I did was I learned how to pronounce choropleth. Because it's choropleth, not chloropleth. Pleth, pleth. It's choropleth. And then I learned how to spell it after misspelling it many times. I'm trying to Google it. And this is, this, you, know, you call them heat maps, you can call them whatever. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that were, it was plastered all over CNN and Fox News and MSNBC when they were doing all their predictions for the elections and whatnot. And these are all going to build up on top of each other. So I'm going to reuse the, um, the, the, the demo thing that I created, or I'm sorry, the, the population demo that I created. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of other functions that I am not going to explain because I already went insane once putting these things together. The simplest being delta. I have two numbers. What's the difference? Subtract. That's easy, right? The next one is delta percentage. The delta percentage came around because looking at the deltas, I was getting a little bit of a misleading story and I'll go into more detail when I, I actually show the map itself um, but Delta percentages started to tell a more interesting story so we've got that and really all that is saying is okay I've got two numbers and I want to know how much of a percentage change there was between the two so I find the difference and I do the, the division to find out what the percentage change was and I'm sure there's a statistician over there screaming at the screen right now because I probably did something wrong with that, but it's still told a pretty good story. Okay, so the map delta and the map delta percentage is where I left a little piece of my sanity back two weeks ago. And um, gosh, I couldn't tell you what this thing does to save my life, but I got it working um, and I saved it because moment of sanity hit me there. And really the idea is I got two maps with IDs and populations and IDs and populations and I want to find I want to create a new map with the same IDs as the two other maps but for each ID I want for the map delta I want the, the delta between 
the two things. And for the delta percentage, I want the delta percentage between the two things. Easy, right? Just loop over one loop and or over one map and go find the stuff in the other. Well, unfortunately, the United States is a growing beast, shrinking in some ways. And not every county existed through every single data set. In Alaska, I'm looking at you. Because there are some places in Alaska that don't have people all the time. Crazy, I know, right? And so what ends up happening is I have to deal with the fact that um, not every ID is in every single map going all the way through. And so when I did my original deltas, I'd blow up with no pointer exceptions because you couldn't find something. And so the crazy here is dealing with the crazy of the data that I got from the Census Bureau, which is for another video. Okay, now from there, I've dealt with the crazy. I've isolated the crazy. Now I can compose on top of the crazy and do less crazy. I can do more, I can do richer functions from there. So I could say, okay, I want to retrieve the delta for a particular state and year, which will start by going back and retrieving the that year's data and that previous year's data, not in that order, and I'm going to take that, I'm going to execute the map delta, and I'm going to get a new data set with the delta for those two years. So given 2011, it'll find the delta from 2010 to 2011. I could extend this even to do deltas across larger swaths of time as well. Same thing here, except now I'm doing delta percentage for a particular state. Now I can get into even richer functions where given whatever data set, I want you to start building maps. So here's where I invoke my own Corpleth plot, which is my extension to Gorilla, which invokes the, the, the map stuff in Vega. And I've created, a, I've put in a few, few things here. Oops, let's not be making changes here. A few things where you can pass in different map colors, which I have defaulted to the standard blue that you get from Vega. Um, to the, the size, so it defaults to a fairly typical size for a, a computer screen. But can be changed, so you can stick them in tables or whatever. Um, and I do like full map, that's the whole United States. Um, a standard map given a state, so I'm looking at Illinois. I just want to look at Illinois, or I want to look at Virginia. I want to just look at Virginia. Um, and then I do the same thing for map deltas, and the reason I've got separate functions for these is I have different color scales. For a standard map, it's just this color to that color, right? Low population to high population. But when you get into deltas, deltas can go up and deltas can go down. So if they go up, I want them to be green. If they go down, I want them to be red. And if they're in the middle, I don't want them to be whatever the halfway point is between red and green, which is some form of puke, I think. I want it to be white. So this deals with a color scheme that goes from red to white to green, which Vega handles quite nicely. And actually I think it's D3 that's really doing the, the magic behind the scenes, but whatever. Um, the delta percentage, um, I'm being a little more specific. So with delta, I just say red is the lowest number. If it's negative five, that's red. And if it's negative five million, well, that's the deepest form of red. Negative five would be closer to white. Delta percentage, I set a scale. Negative 8% to positive 8% because every single map I looked at, I wanted to have the same story. If I'm looking at California and I see a negative 2% change, I'm looking at Louisiana and I see a negative 2% change, I want the color, the shades to be the same so I know that they're apples to apples. Or in the case of California, oranges to oranges. And then this is where we actually build the functions to build the maps. And so here I'm invoking the retrieve population, calling the build full map. So here I'm doing the uh, calling the retrieve population. I have a hard coded 2011. I could have parameterized that. It's just a demo. Um, same thing here for showing a delta from 2011 to 2012. And then um, see here, compare maps. This is a function that builds uh, three different maps of the same state in the same year, but shows, okay, here's, here's a population map compared to its delta map, compared to its delta percentage. So you can see what the difference is between those functions. 
And then build population maps is where I go crazy and just show you all the different colors, right? So I've got different color schemes. Pretty much it's all just different color schemes. I'm that original. And uh, and then the this is the big one. This is the one where I show here's change over the entire 15 year period so you can tell what's what's going on. And so here I actually invoke those functions. So let, let's just go up here and let's just start running these from the top. Loading up all the retrieval functions. They're all composing, building on top of each other. Yeah, I could run the whole thing at once, but what fun is that? And there we should be able to run the full population. Yes, my CPU melted just a little doing that. I'm still impressed that they handled it pretty quickly there. And there you go, map the United States population 2011. If I wanted to change that, I could go up here and where are you, Mr. Map? Here we go. Change it to 2015. Zoink. And we'll rerun that. And boom, there it is. And behold, not a lot has changed. So let's look at something a little more interesting like Delta. So this is the population Delta from 2010 to 2011. Here you can see, hey, you know, up here, you can't tell that there's been a whole lot of change up here in North Dakota. But boy, you throw the Delta on there, there's some big change going on in North Dakota. And what happened? Well, they discovered oil in 2008, 9, 10, but population boom really hit in 2011. So you can see there are 13% growth in McKinsey County. So um, from there, um, you can do more comparison, build more charts, which you'll see on the report that I built. Um, Missouri is a really interesting example of why it's important to understand the data and what the data means, even when you're looking at a visualization. So here you can see the big old chunk of whatever here. And what is it? Well, it's St. Louis County. St. Louis is a pretty big place compared to the rest of Missouri, right? And you look at the Delta, this is the Delta map, and you're like, whoa, what happened here? They lost a lot of people in 2011. What's up? I'm sorry, this is 2006. My bad. 2006, they lost a lot of people. Percentage wise, or not percentage wise, but numbers wise. Um, and with St. Charles gained a lot of people. Like, whoa, everybody's moving to St. Charles. As well they should. It's a nice place. I've been there. But it doesn't really tell the right story because, okay, you know, St. Louis lost 4,800 people. Whoopee. They've got millions. They can lose 5,000 whatever, and it's not huge. So the delta percentage tells a better story. Percentage-wise, they only lost, like, what, 1.5%? And actually, that's still a lot, but it's still, I mean, that's a lot better than, you know, Oh, it's so red. Well, not really, not relative to its population. And sorry, St. Charles. I mean, yeah, 2.75 is nothing to sneeze at as a percentage, but it's less than, say, Christian County that had a 5% growth. That's twice the relative growth. And the same thing can be, you know, you can see a lot of the same results out of uh, some of these other maps, like, you know, Windsor County. Whoa, they lost so many people. Well, not really, not relative to the... 57,000 people that are living there. So just an interesting case study in um, look at, looking and understanding data. So 2006 here, you can also see the, um, the same thing here where um, good old Louisiana lost a fair amount of its population around the coastlines due to a, a pesky little hurricane called Katrina. Here's that uh, example showing all the maps. All sort of laid out with different color schemes. And here you can show that that vector, that range that I created from 2000 to 2015. So you can see over time, uh, you get up here at the 2006 and you can see, um, now this is using the fixed percentage, not the relative percentage. So graphs are a little bit different here. They're not quite as red um, because percentage wise, it's all trying to line up. But that's a pretty, you know, 76%, that's a pretty significant drop in population there. But then you can see recovery over the next several years um, around the New Orleans area. So now the maps are starting to tell a story. And from there, I can actually build a report. So that's what I did. Taking Gorilla Repl's ability to build formulas. Now, this is a neat little feature where you can actually create algebraic formulas in 
text format and he's using latex here uh, which has been around since dirt but he's using it quite effectively in this documentation now this particular function I have no idea what this does I just literally went and found a latex function to show in here to gratuitously show it off but there it is you can do it um, this is a more interesting looking function than Delta um, but here, I just invoked those same functions back in the Coralpleth worksheet to show all the same graphs, including a couple of bar or uh, line charts, um, which I'm working on actually trying to compose on top of each other. So I stick my hands in front of the microphone, um, which I'm still working on. I you know, this isn't you know, I have I have not come to full fruition with this tool. I I got things to learn with it yet. But you can pull these things together, and as you can see, when I loaded it. It loaded pretty darn quick because it's not actually executing anything. It's remembered what I had and reloading it. And so what's really happening here, if I, if I option click on here, it actually shows you the data that is going on behind this graph. Now, if I try to copy this and paste it, I'm gonna blow a gorilla up because there is a limit. It seems to do a pretty good job of handling the data behind the scenes, but when you shove the data right at it, it goes, uncle. Now let's take something smaller, like this map the, of uh, Illinois. Let's take this and let's copy it. This is just data, right? So I can go in here, I can put data in here. Let me say five. There, I just put data in. And the result of five is five. But I can take, and I can paste in the, the map, right? And so what this is, is this is the actual data that I pulled meshed together with the display for how to show the data. And when I execute that, boom, there you go. There's Illinois and all the codes to, to run Illinois. And that's cool because I can take that and I can take that data and I can stick it in a table. I can organize the table however I want. And that's how these things, these tables get composed. I can take these things, I can stack them on top of each other and I can show maps on maps, which I haven't gotten to. Um, so really the sky's the limit on how to go about taking this data and doing interesting things with it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to stop here. When I return in my next video, I'm going to go through and show how I acquired the data from the Census Bureau, because it actually is rocket science. And I'm going to show how I manipulated that and broke it down into datums. In other words, little pieces of information that I could feed into my datum-based database. I'm going to show how I built the datum-based database. So I'll explain the schema how to load it, how to take the data, load it into that database, and then um, I'll show how to build the queries and, and do the queries, all of which will occur when I remember how I did it. Until then, thank you for watching. Please leave comments and um, snide remarks, um, criticisms, whatever you like. I, I love it all because it helps me improve. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you later.